wait a second, why is the moon so close to our planet Earth? Anyway, hello everyone, this is Anton, and in today's video I actually wanted to talk about various tidal effects that our Earth, our planet Earth gets from various objects in our solar system and beyond. Now, we know that if we place the moon that close, it's going to create humongous tidal effects. It's going to cause a lot of destruction because the moon is really, really close. Let's see what other effects we get from other objects in this video. Welcome to What The Math. So Alpha 19 of Universe Starbuck Square actually includes this really awesome new feature called Tidal Effects, where you get a lot of different values here. Specifically, we're going to be looking at uh, Tidal Stress Magnitude, Tidal Heating Effect, and uh, well, I think that's actually it. Uh, tidal stress magnitude refers to the actual value before things start falling apart. So if this suddenly becomes 1, the moon will actually turn into a bunch of rocks. And we can actually make this happen by moving the moon closer into the Roche limit of our planet Earth. And as soon as it reaches a value over 1, this is what starts happening. Um, tidal heating effects are essentially how much the planet or the body orbiting another body gets in terms of heating from um, the tidal effects. And in this case, the moon is actually getting quite a lot, or was getting quite a lot, and this would actually warm up the moon quite dramatically. Um, but what we're going to be taking a look at is actually the realistic um, solar system. And specifically here, I wanted to analyze various tidal effects we get from some of the more massive objects in, um, in our solar system. And also, we're going to take a look at some of the objects beyond as well. So here we're going to take a look at the Sun, we're going to take a look at possibly Venus and Mars, we're definitely going to take a look at uh, Jupiter and Saturn, and uh, maybe even things like Pluto. So what we need to know for this is of course the distance of all of these objects from our planet Earth. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a new simulation, place Earth right in the middle, and we're going to start with something that we know very well, and that's going to be the Moon, which is going to be the standard for our measurements here. We're going to place it at a distance of 300,000 kilometers, which is where approximately it is. We're going to click on Earth and take a look at the values for uh, tidal stress magnitude and tidal heating effect. So as you can see, this is in megawatts. If I were to change it to regular watts, it, it would be a value of 5 times 10 to the power of 12. So 5 followed by 12 zeros. This is how much tidal heating it will get from the moon. And this is uh, the tidal stress magnitude we'll get from it. So it's uh, 5 zeros, 4, 7, 1. Just kind of remember this because this is actually the highest tidal effects we'll get from anything. Next object is going to be the sun. So let's see how much tidal effects sun creates on our planet. In other words, how much tide can the sun cause? So we're going to remove the moon and place the sun at the one astronomical unit away from the Earth. Uh, and so let's zoom into Earth again and look at the tidal effects that we're getting from the sun. So it's about four times lower in terms of the actual tidal heating and it's about four times lower in terms of tidal stress as well. In other words, we still get a lot of, uh, or some tides from the sun, but it's not as powerful as it is from the moon. And if I were to place both here, especially when moon and the sun are on the same side, in other words, when there is a total eclipse, the tidal effects become the highest. So here it's 6.1 uh, times 10 to the power of 12, and uh, tidal stress is a little bit higher as well. So this gives us the highest tidal effects possible on our planet Earth. All right, so that's that's common knowledge, kind of. This is what you learn in school usually, and this is what uh, well, not the numbers, of course, but this is what uh, a lot of the schools sort of focus on. But they never tell you about tidal effects of other objects, so let's investigate those as well. Now let's start with our friend Mars here. Uh, so we've done the Moon, we've done the Sun. Let's place the Mars at the closest possible distance to our planet Earth, which is, according to the table I'm looking at right now, is about 78 million kilometers. So it's a little bit farther away. It's right around here. So this is the closest possible distance to, um, to our planet Earth. Now, let's go into the tidal effects and find out what Mars is causing on our planet. And as you can see, the effects are something like a million times less strong than the effects from the moon. There's six more zeros here, there's six less zeros here. In other words, Mars, compared to the moon, may actually nudge things a little bit on our planet due to tidal effects, but uh, they might move not in uh, meters like they do from the moon, but in millimeters. Uh, 
based on those effects from Mars. So in other words, Mars does not actually cause a lot of tidal effects, even though it does a little bit. How about Venus? Venus is actually closer to us, and Venus is a lot more massive than Mars. Mars is only about uh, 9 masses of Moon, whereas Venus is like 66. So let's place Venus at a distance of about... 41 million uh, kilometers, which is the closest distance that Venus gets to our planet Earth. And let's go back into those tidal effects and check them out. And not surprisingly, the effects are dramatically higher. As a matter of fact, I would say that they are even up to about 100 times higher than the effects from Mars. Still not as high as the effects from the Moon though, but uh, the value we're getting from Venus for tidal heating is about 14 uh, megawatts. Mars was only giving us about 0.27 megawatts, which is uh, something like 60 or even 70 times lower. And Moon was giving us close to about 550,000 megawatts, which is uh, something like 50,000-ish times higher. So, uh, yeah, clearly the Moon is the winner so far. Sun is the second close. And so far, Venus is uh, a distant third. All right, so let's go to the next object that is very important in the simulation, and that's, of course, going to be Jupiter, because we're going to skip Mercury due to its small size and farther away distance. So we're going to place Jupiter at a distance of about 4.2 astronomical units, which is about 630 million kilometers, and that is uh, about 15 times farther away than Venus. Now, can you guess, is it going to have more effect, more tidal effect on our Earth or less? It is about 15 times farther away, but it's also a lot, a lot more massive. As a matter of fact, it's 300 times more massive than Earth, or about 500 times more massive than Venus. Just to give you a comparison, let's come over here for a second. Let's uh, place Venus next to it. That's how tiny Venus is. And if I were to smack Venus into Jupiter, it wouldn't even budge this number. It wouldn't even change at all. That's basically how massive it is. Now, logic would dictate that Earth will suddenly receive a lot more tidal effects. But science dictates that logic is not always right, and the effects are actually about five times or maybe six times lower. So Venus was giving us 13 uh, something megawatts, this only gives us 1.6. In other words, Venus is still a winner in terms of tidal effects um, on our planet Earth. And if we were to place both Jupiter and Venus, if I were to actually place Venus on the other side at a distance of about 41 million kilometers, the effects would now become even higher. So now we're getting about 15.7 megawatts of tidal heating, which is still not as much as we get from the moon, but clearly significant enough to move things uh, at least a millimeter up and down on our planet Earth. And also warm them up a little bit as well. Now, as you can imagine, placing Saturn in here will obviously give us a lot less effect, but we're going to do it nevertheless. So, Earth to Saturn is about 8.5 astronomical units, and we're going to place it right here and see if we get uh, a much lesser tidal effect from it, because Saturn is also less massive than Jupiter. And so, tidal effects here are uh, way less than a megawatt now, so it's a little bit closer to what we were getting from Mars. Uh, in other words, uh, Saturn and Mars seem to have relatively similar effect on our planet Earth in terms of gravi uh, gravitational tidal effects. Alright, so uh, we're not going to do Neptune or Uranus, but I actually wanted to try things like Pluto, for example, because um, even though it's not a planet anymore, it's still out there and it might al also have some kind of effect on our planet Earth. So re let's remove Saturn and let's place Pluto at a distance of... 38 astronomical units, so that's about 38 times the distance of Earth uh, from the Sun. So it's around here. Let's go back to Earth, click on the uh, tidal effect value under motion, and look at that. There's still a bit of an effect. It's about a million times lower than what we're getting from Mars, but it is still there. So at this point, um, things on Earth are experiencing the gravitational effects from Pluto, uh, in terms of uh, molecules shifting around. So on molecular level, you definitely feel the effects from Pluto, but, but definitely not something you could easily see uh, by looking at the surface of objects, for example. So, so because Pluto is so, so far away and has such a little mass, it obviously has almost no effect. But this should give you an idea that every single object in our solar system, everything in our solar system, Every little rock, every little uh, object that you see orbiting around the sun has a tidal effect on our planet Earth. So things um, 
inside of you, things around around you and things on our planet always shift around, always move around due to the tidal effects from all of these objects around us. But the highest effects are from Venus, from Moon, from the Sun, uh, and to some extent from Jupiter and Mars as well. How about objects outside of our solar system? So let's actually go back to our Earth and start with the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri. It's about 4.2 light uh, years away from us and it definitely has a bit of an effect. What effect is it? Well, it's even less than the effect from Pluto. As a matter of fact, it's uh, close to about a million times less than the effect from Pluto. So what we're getting from Proxima Centauri is very, very insignificant and will shift things even less than on my molecular level. Basically, we're talking about subatomic uh, particle shifting. Okay, how about the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, Sagittarius A? Well, that's about 26,000 light years away from us, but we're going to try it anyway. So let's move away, zoom out of here, 26,000 light years away, right around here. Go back to our planet Earth, click on motion and check this out. It's actually relatively similar to what we're getting from... Um, Proxima Centauri, but maybe about 100 times less. And in terms of comparing this to the tidal effects from the moon, it's basically like taking this number and multiplying it by, I think it's a 2 followed by 20 zeros. In other words, the effect from Sagittarius A star, which is right there far, far away, 26,000 um, light years away from us, is absolutely insignificant. So here we're talking about tiny, 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 minuscule motions of subatomic particles that are impossible to even notice um, in comparison to, let's just say, Mars, Venus, or the Moon. And so, yeah, everything in our solar system, everything in our galaxy will have the tidal effects on our planet Earth, but only the most massive, only the largest objects close to us will actually have significant effects that will essentially uh, cause visible effects on our planet Earth, including things like tides, tidal waves, and possibly even cause earthquakes. So those objects might be the Moon, they might be the Sun, to some extent it might also be Mars and Venus, and maybe Jupiter. But that's really where it ends, only those uh, five objects. Everything else, however, will only influence the molecular level of things, and will very unlikely change anything in your, in your regular life. Anyway, so let's actually just remove this for a second and add all of those five objects and see how much tidal heating we get from everything. And so here are these five objects that give us the highest tidal effect, including the moon right close to us. And notice how the tidal heating effects go up and down a lot. And this is essentially what's really happening here. So, okay, maybe not that. That's just a little bit too extreme. Uh, they go up and down based on where the objects are located, based on the orbit of these objects, and based, of course, on the fact that everything in our solar system is always in motion. So it will change and move around and things will always shift around depending on the location. So that's the essence of the tidal effect. That's the essence of the gravitational work of various objects on our planet. And this is uh, how things always influence each other in our solar system, in our galaxy, and in the universe. Anyway, so hopefully you learned something from this, from this video and hopefully you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to come back tomorrow to learn something else educational through video games. Don't forget to subscribe, possibly share this video with someone who enjoys these videos, and leave a like as well. And you know what? Uh, leave a comment. Is there another object I should have added in here just so that we can see the title effects as well? If so, maybe we'll do this in the next part. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye-bye.